I've sort of been in love with Carrie Mae Weems since I was first introduced to her work as a freshman. And so when her name came up as a possibility of being one of the visiting artists, I sort of jumped at the opportunity. Um, well, jumped and screamed at the opportunity. <laughs> so when I came across the, the, um, the gallery, uh, the, the sheet with all the like the exhibitions and stuff and then I saw her name I'm like no way <laughs> like no way. I really enjoy working with Carrie Mae Weems. Um, I received a prompt from my department to you know explore this visual artist. I was really excited and I believe she had just shot or posted that she had just shot the Spike Lee on the cover of Time magazine. So I was just like, whoa, wait, who are they bringing here? Like, this is the caliber of someone amazing. So I expected Carrie Mae Weems to come in and, and be a presence and inform us in more ways than in a normal classroom experience. But I didn't expect us to, like, work on this project that was going to be presented at the end. Honestly, like, I had no idea there was a presentation at the end. Um, I even invited my mom up because I was like, <laughs> yeah. It was sort of like, how can I, how can I insert myself anywhere need be to, to get to spend more time with her? My name is Jay Hooper. I am a PhD student within the Interdisciplinary Arts Department at the College of Fine Arts. You know, I, like most PhD students, were sitting and observing. Yeah. And here she is with this paper and not knowing what my craft is, not knowing what my, my style of work is, uh, and me as an artist, she immediately just says, here, read this. Right. And <laughs> I'm sitting there and all of a sudden, I had to laugh because here I am, who I use preaching as performance. She did not have a clue, so it was interesting to think for a moment that here I am reading a text now, you know, given to me by someone I admire, which becomes immediately sacred to me. And then to enjoy the ability to embody her speech, to embody her decorum and her cadence and her rhetoric, and then in some way bring it back out to enflesh it, if you will, as she sees the world in this particular way. Um, I don't think there could have been any, any better experience for me. So my name is Wendy Marie Martin. I'm a first year PhD student in the iArts department. It was really informative watching her work because um, she gives complete permission for anything to happen and no judgment. Um, I think often people want to get to a product and so they're quick, quick to judge, like that's bad, cut it, that you know, whatever. Um, but watching her just be completely in the moment with the bodies that she had on stage, um, with what she was getting from them, uh, I think it helped everybody have permission to just take a deep breath, you know, and think of it less as um, less maybe presentational or less product oriented and really more um, looking at the experience, more experiential. In indigenous cultures, in African, West African cultures, and Black cultures, there's this, there's this, uh, this circle, and everything is on the same playing ground. And I loved even how she put her desk on the stage, um, and was there with us the whole time. And for her to be very transparent when she didn't know, you know, I really don't know at this point of stage. So it's allowing other people to come up and be like, well, this is what I think, and okay, we'll hold that idea, okay. Okay, and have this circle and have it be non-hierarchical, which is something I think she talks about in her work a lot. So for her to not only say it, but show it in her crafting, that she's on the stage with us, that she's in the process and she's in the thick of it with us, and also to change her ideas on spot, because I believe when she said she came, when she said she was coming and what she wanted to put up was not even what she ended up doing at all. She saw what we were doing and she was like, you know, less, I'm gonna take this all in and change on spot. What a vulnerable space to be in, just in general, to allow for others to implement their ideas, expand on the body of work that you have created. Um, there's so much vulnerability in that. There's so much, um, there's so much uh, also in discourse, right? These, the sharing of power. Um, there's a dialectic happening. There's so much happening there, um, which is brave, 
which also allowed for other people to show up in brave ways that I don't think that, that we have seen on this campus. I cannot negate also just the fact that the impact that it made on, on, on so many students of color in that space to have a black woman show up in that way, to also cultivate also a loving and also compassionate environment, being mindful of different ide ideologies in that room, different, uh, different persons, and, 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 and honoring them in a way that they could be presented uh, that speaks to the integrity of right scholarship and artistry. Another thing I think that she does that's very inspirational and um, uh, helpful is her work as a visual artist. So we work with words, right? So we're trying to work out like, is it clear what I'm trying to communicate? And then you see her get on stage and pull these flags, simple, fl made five minutes ago flags, right? And create this gorgeous stage picture. And it made, it made me stop and think, it was part of what led to my rewrites, to stop and think about, okay, well, I know the words I'm using, but what, what am I trying to say visually? Um, and I think that was incredibly helpful. So I presented um, uh, a film, the film, um, uh, it was called um, uh, An American School Shooting uh, 2018 um, because it made me think about um, school shootings and um, how that affects, you know, youth culture and um, so I made a montage film um, that kind of deconstructed the trope of a school shooting and how it's, it's the same thing over and over, nothing's ever done about it. So I used found footage, it was all uh, news footage that I just got off of different websites and mainly YouTube, and, but then I cut it together to show the uh, repetition of what the newscasters were saying even though they were very different incidents. Um, and there ended up being like uh, 21 school shootings across the U.S. In, just in 2018. I shouldn't be going through this. <laughs> Running from their own school. Right, there was complete chaos. This is going to be a triple shooting. Where you can see a group of people. Victim was targeted. At a JV game. I don't know what she was, I think she was expecting me to dance or do something dancing because I didn't tell her what it was. Um, uh, but then when she saw the film, she was like, oh, okay, yeah, that, that was. Um, but her response to it was like, wow, um, it's not something that she was like thinking about. And so she was like, it was, that was a good way to present it in a way that didn't feel like you were um, shoving information. It was just there and it was, you can come with it what you want. Uh, I didn't necessarily write a script, but I had the vision in my mind. And so um, I, what I had done is I printed off the diversity inclusion statement on our website. So I was protesting and then um, the white people on stage were interacting with me in a way that was opposite of what the, the statement said. So they were reading the statement in, in an enthusiastic way, but also throwing my protest signs and uh, uh, pushing me and shoving me and like, like making sure that I didn't have space on the stage. Mm -hmm. The kind of feelings that we're going through, it was just like there's this statement and there's this projection of diversity and inclusion and there's the actual efforts of diversity and inclusion on campus. Everybody responded to it well and Carrie responded to it uh, very uh, positively and she, I think she really liked it and she told, she told me that was a beautiful piece and I, it made me very emotional because it was just like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm actually, that's when I re like, it really hit me that I was working with her, that she like actually actually like observed the piece and loved it. One thing that I do think um, was birthed out of that was that um, I kind of feel like I found a different liberation to my container. Um, and so Kasaya and myself recently did some street poetry. And it was there, the audience is whoever something resonates with to listen and just I don't know, something about her was just very like commanding of her space and then once, you know, in that space, taking the time. And that was my biggest takeaway was learning how to take back the time and then when I have it, to hold it. Because one note she continued to give me was slow down, take your time. So yeah, that was, that was a huge takeaway for me and I, I yeah, I, I hope she comes back. <laughs> it was just very comforting for me and nurturing and it just, it made me really emotional after everything was ending because it was just like, the, I, 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 this, this was the one point in my life where I felt like my art, sorry, <laughs> where I felt like my art was like, real and I, I enjoyed it and I was proud of it. And so this was the first time I actually had that experience. We talk about the experience a lot 
a lot actually in um, when we're when we're discussing stuff in class and and, and because it's the one it's the one thing that really knocked all of us off our you know off our rocker in a good way you know and I and I I was like when Hurricane Weems came in you know I'm like I, I speak about that that time because it was um, I think we none of us was really were really prepared how much it was going to change us